And the reason it's going to be easy is because, and it's one of the reasons I typed this into Mathematica, not, not to bore you guys watching me type it in, uh, is because this is where I want you guys to use the computer. I do not want, and that's why we can take the test in class, because you're going to have a laptop in front of you, and you're going to have already coded and verified this. Because I don't want the test to be about who can type this into their calculator fast enough to pass the test. That's just silly, right? This is a perfect uh, example of being able to write a computer program. And you know, I'm going to do it in, in uh, Mathematica only because I just derived this in Mathematica and I have the equation available to me. <coughs> this is just as easy to do in, in any other language, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function, right? So in, in MATLAB, you can create a function file, right? In, in, um, in, um, in Mathematica, the, 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 the sort of the corollary to function is, is called a, uh, a module, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take alpha, beta, and gamma as arguments to my function. Create a module that returns th this. So then I should be able to call this compute RG with angles. What if they're all zero? What should I get back? The identity matrix, right? If they're all zeros, there's no rotation. So I should get the, the, the identity matrix. Uh, if I do um, you know, minus 90 degrees in gamma, or I'm sorry, 90 degrees in gamma, which would be the rotation we just discussed, to bring S2 to the vertical stress for the strike slip faulting regime, then you'd get this guy. All right. So, I mean, this is the thing. And, and if you've ever had another class with me, you know I'm really big at talking about when you program, you should write small functions. Right? Like, I know you, you, you guys write MATLAB scripts and there's 500 lines in one file, right? Don't do that. Write small functions, right? And the reason is small functions are easy to test, right? Now, this is, this is you know, I, I trust that I, I mean, all, that's why I der derived it in Mathematica so that I could just copy and paste it, right? But if you had to type this into MATLAB all with all those sines and cosines, there's a good chance you can make a typo, right? Sign error or something like that, right? Which would cause your 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 rotation matrix would be wrong. But test it. Write a small function that just does that. Takes three angles and, and reports back the rotation matrix. And I have examples in the notes that you can test your, your rotation matrix again. And if you can reproduce those rotation matrices from the notes, you can trust that your function is correct. Right? And as you go on to write bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger programs, where now you're just calling these small functions that you've already checked, and you know it's correct when you get wrong answers, when you uh, have errors and, the, and you know the code won't run and there's an error, it's much easier to debug, right? Because you wrote a small function, you already know that that function works. So if I'm getting an error, it's not there, right? It's got to be somewhere else. So write small functions that you can test and then test them. So that the exam that you're going to have will be the easiest, if you, if you come to the exam prepared, Having written these functions and tested them, and you'll use them on your homework, next homework too, your exam will simply be identify the three angles and stick them in your program and get the answer. Because that's what you do as an engineer, right? Once, once you did this once, you'd never do it, you're never going to type that in your calculator again. Right? You're going to write a program to do this. So that's what we're going to do in class. Right? So then, uh, 
you know, to take my actual stress values, to take my actual stress values into the geographic frame. So this S is my principal stresses. RG is my rotation matrix. To take it into the principal stress, I use this formula. And of course, you know, rotation matrices are unitary. That's why, you know, previously in the class we might have had an inverse there, R inverse. But a rotation matrix is always unitary, meaning it's its, it's inverse is its transpose. Right? And so now if I want to take it further, right, I can I can say I can write another function. This time this function will be compute SG, right? So the stress in the geographic frame. And it's going to take the, the tensor or matrix S, and it's going to take also alpha, beta, gamma as arguments. And inside, I'm going to call my compute RG function. So I'm going to compute RG. RG is a local variable. And uh, it's, I'm going to call it with alpha, beta, and gamma. And then I'm going to return the transpose of RG times S times RG. So now I have a function compute SG that should do everything for me, right? And again, if I've tested compute RG, if I've tested this function, if I try to run this and, and there's an error, it, it can only be on this line, right? Because I, I know that one works. And you build up very large programs just use, you know, by writing lots of little small functions that you can test. When I, when in my research group we write sort of production quality software in C++, and I, I don't let the students check, you know, so we have a version control like a repository where, you know, as we make improvements or enhancements to the code, then that gets checked in. That's the, the lingo, checked in to like a, a history uh, of, you know, of the code as it progresses through time and as we enhance it so that we can always go back in time if we need to, if, if we break something. But uh, the, the chances are of us breaking something are very low because we have a full, like a test suite, meaning sort of every single function that gets written uh, gets run in a test such that when we, when we compile the code, if we have a test suite that you run, you actually type a, on the command line, you type make test, and it'll run the test suite. And our goal is that every time we run make test, and this is a, this is a code that has like 30,000 something lines of code in it, that every single line of code of those 30,000 get executed in the test suite every time. And so er, any new addition, every new function that we write and go, and we, before we check it in, we also write a test. So every single new addition to the code gets a new test to the extent that now there's thousands of tests in the test suite. So every time we run the code, and that, that ensures that, you know, when you have a very, very large code, 30,000 lines of code, you know, you could be making a change in one file, and just without knowing it, you could break something that's occurring somewhere else in the code, right? And the test suite forces, you know, it, it prevents that from happening, or allows you a way to check it, right? And then we can verify that your code is high quality that way. So, you know, think about that when you when you write your own programs and when you work on your homeworks. That you know, basically, every little small function should have a test. Now, maybe you're not going to write your own test suite for your homework, but you can sort of do it manually, right? You can you can stick in three numbers there and compare it with the examples I have in the notes and make sure that it's right before you move on. So, here's the here's the the verification problems, right? There's our stress tensor. And the, you know, these are the principal stresses ordered, S1, S2, S3. There's your rotations. I'm just giving them to you here. Uh, in your homework, you'll have to identify them, right? But uh, so 30, 25, 20, 
zero zero ninety, right? So this is I'm going to call my f I'm going to create s um, thirty twenty five oops thirty zero zero twenty five. Twenty, and then I'm going to call compute SG with S and then the three angles zero, zero, ninety degrees. Thirty. So what was thirty twenty five twenty? RG becomes that. And SG becomes that 30, 20, 25. So it's just a this is just a, a 90 de degree rotation of the axes. So I just you just change the you just swap essentially the 20 and the 25. Right? 30, 20, 25. So where we just tested my code I wrote in class against the known solution. I suggest you do the same thing when you work on your homework. Yep. Uh, well, I mean, you have to you have to essentially comp compare them to to this. So in the in the homework, I'll give you I'll give you in words, right? You know, using a normal faulting regime, right? That gives you an idea of how to order them, and then I might give you, you know, two of the stresses. You know, uh, or one. You know, in a normal faulting regime, with S1 in in the azimuth of 20 degrees, or to the northwest, or something like that. So it'll be in a in words probably, and then you have to pick them pick them off. Uh, So we did this one, 30, 25, 20. So it's just minus. The only difference here is minus 90 on the angles. So I'm just going to change this to minus 90. And you get this 20, 25, 30. 20, 25, 30. Uh, and then So 90, 0, 0, 25, 30, 20, 25, 30, 20. So that's right. So then, uh, you know, last one. This is actually strike slip faulting, but the but the strike is not oriented with north. Now it's the strike itself is is like one one hundred. Um, not the strike, but the the direction of S uh, three is. Uh, 135 degrees. So, you know, this would be given in words in some kind of problem statement, right? and you'd have to make that decision. Right? So, 60, 40, 35, uh, 135.90. And there, I actually have some shear stresses. So there's the stress. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's helpful for you guys to see it like this. So there's actually some off-diagonal components there, some shear stress. Let me get the right answer. Yeah. So my code works. I can try verified it. I have confidence when I go and work my homework and work my tests that. All I have to do is identify the correct angles, and I'll get the right answer. Okay, so.